welcome back. So I hope you're all having a wonderful week so far. Today's video is my best of beauty eyes and lips. So I have already filmed my best in beauty face products and that's like foundations, concealers, blushes, bronzers, highlight, and all of that fun stuff. I did want to mention really quick, because in that video, I talked about this blush, this NARS blush in Madly, and I was trying to explain that in the pan, it's so boring. So I told you guys I would wear it in a video soon. So that's the blush that I have on today. I just love that darn blush so, so much. So I wanted to let you guys know that. And a lot of these products I am wearing on my face today or on my eyes and lips. So let's go ahead and get started because I don't want it to be a god awful long video. I know, I don't, I don't really know if I like what I did with my hair today, but we're just rolling with the punches here, okay? So the first two things are really boring. The, they are like eyeshadow bases. And of course, MAC Painterly Paint Pot was like my ride or die for the first eight or nine months of the year. So I had to mention it. However, I have since found a eye base that I actually prefer over Painterly. And it's by Mika Beauty and it's just called the Eye Primer. And I feel like I just, this one matches and conceals my lids better than Painterly. Painterly is kind of a little bit more pinky toned. And so I feel like sometimes it can make my eyes look sick, you know? And this one doesn't. This one just straight up conceals and it works really great. So I definitely recommend this one. I am going to list all these products and link them in the description box if I can find them all. Okay, so let's move on to eyeshadows because there are a few brands specifically that really I loved this year. And then there was a few singles too that I really preferred. To be honest, and I'm looking at my pile now, I did not pick one single palette. Now, if I had to pick an overall favorite palette for 2014, it would be the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. However, it didn't blow me away as much as these shadows. So, the first ones I want to mention are the Makeup Forever Single Shadows. And these were new this year. I started out with these three. And um, I have a video swatching these. And then I have a video swatching all of these in this palette. So, I'll link those two videos below because I know you probably don't want to watch me swatch every single one of these because I have 11 of them. I'm wearing this shade right here in my crease today. This is just a gorgeous shade for all of your lid or as a brow bone highlight or a face highlight. This one actually I have used as a blush. I will annotate the name of these three right here because the one I've used as a blush, whatever it's called, is really great because you can put it in your crease, you can put it on your lower lash line, and you can use it as a blush. And then this one here, you can wear it so many different ways as a cheek highlight, eye highlight, everything. So I definitely love these. And the pans, the pans are big enough that you can stick your brush in them, like even your blush brushes, and it works beautifully. So I definitely recommend as a whole the Makeup Forever eyeshadows, but those two specifically, if you want good multi-functional, you know, pieces or eyeshadows to add to your makeup collection, those are good. And then here is the eight pan palette that I have. This one right here, I actually love for just an all over to set my eyeshadow base and it's in the color M530. I also love to use that for a matte brow bone highlight. That's what I have on my brow bone today, and I love it. So I highly recommend Makeup Forever eyeshadows. And then some more single eyeshadows. You know I'm gonna mention Makeup Geek. I have a link below to Makeup Geek. Now that is an affiliate link. I just wanna let you guys know. But um, you don't have to use my link, but it is down there if you, you know, want to use it. I stinking love her shadows. The thing is, for me, it's not that big of a price difference, and they're pretty much the same as MAC shadows. 
but not everyone has a Mac Pro card. So these make it really, really, really affordable. Some that I definitely recommend, one that I use and when I show you, I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I'm almost hitting pan on beaches and cream. I hear a lot of people talk about cream brulee or what's this? This is cream brulee or peach smoothie, but beaches and cream is perfect for my fair skin in the transition color. I just love it so much. I use Shimma Shimma all the time for a shimmer highlight. I have Coco Bear on the lower lash line today just smudged out. It can also help deepen up your outer V and I love that shade. Chickadee, I have a full tutorial using Makeup Geek's Chickadee. I mean, they're just staple eyeshadows. So I definitely recommend those. These are the ones I use all the time. And then I have some in this palette as well. Love her shadows. And then, um, okay, let's talk about something like a single thing. And this was limited edition. So I will try to find it somewhere on eBay or Amazon or something. But also check like your local Chanel counters because New Moon blew me away. This is one of the Chanel Illusion Day Ombres. And when I got this, I could not stop wearing it for like a month. It is so pretty. Now, it does have some glitter and some shimmer, which some people don't like. But I feel like on the lid, they are beautiful. Also, if you just take your fingertip and dab it in the center of your lid, it just really catches the light and gives you a complete different eye look. So I definitely recommend New Moon if you can find it. I hesitated putting it in here because it was limited edition, but it was my favorite too, so I'm not going to lie, you know. And then another single shadow that was like such a favorite this year for so many different things is the Wet n Wild single, single Shadow in Brulee. This, I started using it just to blend out my... um like my crease color and it works really well for, for that it works as a brow bone highlight but actually what I really loved this for this year was to set my under eye concealer and I know that sounds funny but it actually really works really good I don't know it has some kind of brightening effect under your eyes so I definitely if you have this I definitely recommend you trying it out that way um, it's only a dollar ninety nine so even if you get it and just use it as an eyeshadow, that's a great deal. But if you can find another use like under your eyes to set your concealer, that makes it even more of a steal. And I'm sure these are going to be in so many people's favorites. And I hate being the one that just follows the crowd. But for real, the ColourPop eyeshadows are just amazing. I definitely recommend these as a whole, just depending on really what you like. I personally, my favorite is the color Dare because I don't have anything like this. I actually don't have anything with this same formula in my whole collection. But this shade in the spring summertime is just, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just so gorgeous. On your lower lash line, it's gorgeous. On your lid, it's beautiful. So I definitely recommend Dare, but I don't think you can get, go wrong with any of these ColourPop eyeshadows. And then Game Face is probably my second favorite. I used this so much in the fall. It's just so pretty. I have, um, look at that. Are you kidding me? You got to get some of these. And I should mention that they're only $5.00. And they just came out, I don't know if they've released them yet, but they came out with matte ones too. So that's just, that's just an amazing company. And then something else as far as eyeshadows is pigments. Now I have MAC pigments and Makeup Geek pigments, NYX pigments, everything. Look, I'm getting all comfortable because I want to tell y'all that Coastal Scents pigments are the bomb and nobody talks about them. My girl Jackie from Jackie St. Germain is the one who told me about these pigments and she's the only other person that I've ever heard mention them, but they are amazing quality pigments for like less than a dollar. You can get the little sample bag and it fills up this entire pot. 
I think the sample bag's like 99 cents. This is the one, no, which one do I have on? Chrome Caramine on my lids today. It's just beautiful. And I'm just going to swatch it when it's dry, but when it's wet, it's even more intense. I do have a whole video swatching the pigments that I have from Coastal Scents. And I kind of explain that in that video that you buy the samples and then you buy these, but it still makes it under like $2.50 for a whole pot of pigment that will last you a lifetime. So I think I have eight or 10 of these and I recommend them over Makeup Geek or MAC only because of the price. The quality in all three are equal. It's just, if you wanna save some money, girl, go over to Coastal Scents and check out their pigments. And then a few random eye favorites, and I didn't really know where to place these things, but I wanted to mention two eyeliners. The Inglot Gel Liner in number 77 is a must have. It's great on your top lash line, but it's more perfect in your lower water line because this thing will stay for days, okay? It really stays in your water line without having to set it with a powder, which I love. And it's only, I think, 10 or 12 bucks. Number 77, did I say that? That's the black one. Definitely recommend that. And another eyeliner is the, now you can't go wrong with any of these L'Oreal Silk As Me liners but this is the color highlighter and i love this product for the inner corner of my eye that's what i have on the inner corner of my eye today it just stays these also stay really well i have the purple one which i think is called plum it stays in my waterline like no other i mean it's it besides the inglot one but for a drugstore pencil form eyeliner these are amazing and I definitely recommend them and then two mascaras that were holy grail status for me this year I can't even with it of course I'm going to mention my Chanel La Volume de Chanel mascara I love this I know it's $30 but it's the only mascara you need a lot of times when I spend eight ten twelve dollars on a mascara from the drugstore I feel like I have to uh double it up with another mascara and then even then I still have to use a mascara primer so it's up to 30 bucks now when you can spend $30 for one tube one application will get you the lashes that you want it is a wetter formula so keep that in mind but I highly highly recommend this and then I have always used the Clinique bottom lash mascara until I found the MAC black extended play giga black lash mascara and i love this for my bottom lash line because the wand is so skinny just like the clinique one but it's longer so you can get all your lashes in one swipe instead of with the clinique you kind of have to do three separate you know i don't know swipes this is a really great one. And another good thing that this mascara is for is once you get done with your top mascara, if you have any clumps, you can go in with this really skinny wand and really spread out your lashes. So the combination of these two mascaras is all I have needed this year. And then let's talk about lips. And I'm going to really try to not talk forever about these products. But when I started looking, like these were ride or die as far as lip products go. And I want to mention this first one because it's kind of a hybrid between a lipstick and a lip pencil. And it's the Bite Beauty Lip Pencil in Glossé. This is just one of those things that you can throw in your purse and have in your purse all the time. You really don't even need a mirror to apply it because it just applies really good. It doesn't melt away in your purse and it just kind of combines everything you need. It combines a lip liner and a lipstick and it's long wearing and I definitely recommend this one. And then three lip liners. My favorite lip liner this year was definitely MAC Whirl Lip Liner. This is just, I just wear this with so many things. I wear this with nudes. I wear this with reds. I wear them with, you know, purples. 
I mean, just everything. So I definitely recommend Whirl. This is more of kind of a fall winter lip liner for sure. One that works all year round legitimately for every single lip color and it's the liner I have on right now and it's $3. It's the e.l.f. Lip Liner and Blending Brush. This is a new product from e.l.f. But I got it probably three or four months ago and I consistently wear it all the darn time. It's so, so pretty and perfect. It's just a perfect everyday lip liner. It's in the color natural. It has a brush on the other end. So if you don't want to fuss with a lipstick, you can fill in your lips with this and kind of smudge them out with that brush and you are good to go. And this is like the bomb. I'll tell you what I'm wearing with it and it makes the perfect nude lip and it's probably under $5 total, especially if you can get this on sale when e.l.f. has their half off. And then Urban Decay's lip liners, all of them are great. I definitely recommend Native because if you are someone who likes pink lips or pinky nude lips, this one would be really great to have. And I use this sucker all the time. It's like halfway gone. I love the formula of the Urban Decay lip liners. Just depending on what you're looking for, they have tons of shades in the range and I highly recommend those. And then let's talk real quick about what I'm wearing with this e.l.f. lip liner and that is the Wet n Wild Fergie Lipstick in Fergie Daily. Why did it take me so long to get this? I have no idea, but the combination of the two is just a perfect nude lip for under five or six dollars between the lip liner and the lipstick. Then it wears forever on your lips. So if you're looking for a good nude from the drugstore, try Fergie Daily. And then let's go on the complete opposite end of the spectrum and talk about the Tom Ford lipstick in Spanish Pink. This is just gorgeous. Mine is so beat up because I left it in the car and it's a really creamy formula so that's not good to leave them in the car. It is a peachier pink and kind of got a little bit of coral in there but it's just a gorgeous color and overall the Tom Ford lipsticks are amazing. If you want to treat yourself to like a luxurious feeling wearing lipstick, definitely try Tom Ford. And then another one that's kind of on that nude range that I found this year and loved is MAC Angel. And I stayed away from this for a while because it is a frost finish. But as you can see, it's really not all that frosty. It's definitely more of a pinky nude. So we have kind of just the straight up nude with Fergie Daily and then the more peachy nude with Spanish Pink and then Angel is just a pinky nude. So depending on what you're, you're looking for, those are the nudes I would recommend for the year. Okay, so let's move on to something that is so completely unique and outside of my comfort zone, the NARS lipstick in Dominique. Dominique is gorgeous. I was actually really scared when I got this lipstick, but I've worn it a bunch of times and it's really, really wearable for me. Now, I don't know if it would be for everybody, but I wanted to mention this lipstick and the color Raquel because of if you had to pick any of these NARS lipsticks, of course, depending on your own personal taste, I just feel like Raquel is a perfect everyday color, and then Dominique is something fun, funky, and outside of your comfort zone or outside the box, so I definitely recommend these, but they have so many colors in the range. I'm sure you would be able to find something that you love, and overall, the quality of these NARS Audacious lipsticks are bar none. They're amazing. And then two other lipsticks that I fell in love with in the later part of the year because they're more fall appropriate and winter appropriate lipsticks. Let me just talk about my favorite one and that is the Maybelline Matte Lipstick in Divine Wine. If you don't have this, you need to just pause the video and go to the store and try to find it because it's absolutely amazing. I kind of think it's very close to MAC Sin and MAC Diva, but I actually prefer the formula of these Maybelline ones over the MAC lipsticks. This one is so perfect. If you're looking for that deep wine berry lip, 
try out Divine Wine. And then another one I wanted to mention because I don't hear a ton of people talk about it and it's absolutely amazing. It's a frost from MAC, which people you know, tend to stay away from, but this is in the color Odyssey and it's not all that frosty. It's just amazing. I definitely prefer this frost formula over like the matte because they're not as drying and you don't have to wear a lip gloss over it because it does have some dimension to it. Check out Odyssey when you're in the MAC store. I really think you would like it. So love that. And then a few glosses and gloss type products that I wanted to mention and I won't swatch them because then it's going to take forever and this video is already too long as it is. Okay, this is kind of a hybrid. The Dior Fluid Sticks were amazing. They came out earlier in the year. This is in the color Kiss Me, and this is a perfect, like I said, I'm not going to swatch it, but this is just a perfect everyday pink. It's a lip gloss, but it has the pigmentation of a lipstick, so I definitely feel like you could get away with just this product, and I highly recommend it. And then I loved this It Je Ne Sais Quoi um, gloss. It is so awesome and it's really cool because it changes with the pH of your lips. I wore this so much this summer just with nothing else. It swatches just kind of clear, but it really turned a deeper pink on me and I loved it and I like the formula. So I definitely recommend this one. And then two Chanel Glossomers. This one is in the color Twinkle, and this is a permanent in the line. I love the Glossomer formula. This, this year was the first time I tried the Glossomers, and I highly recommend them. And then, of course, I loved Song or Sange, but this was limited. If I can find it, I'll link it. Because it's gorgeous, it just transforms any lip color into pure magic beauty on your lips. And then one more lip gloss that really, really like surprised me this year is by Laura Geller. And I don't hear a lot of people talk about it. The only other person I've ever heard mention this was Sam from the, from Sam Sherman. And it's called City Lights. It smells so good, which is always good when you're putting something around your mouth area. You want it to smell good. But I'm going to add this to this, what I have on, because it's just so pretty. If you just add it to the center of your lips, it is amazing. Mmm. I just love it so much. It's one of those that you just pop in the center of your lips. It has some glitter particles in it, but it doesn't feel like glitter on your lips. The matte dazzle glasses kind of, you can kind of feel the glitter in on these. You can't feel the glitter whatsoever. And then the very last lip product that I have to mention is the Dior Lip Balm. This thing is a lifesaver. I'm almost out of mine and I will definitely be repurchasing it. Highly recommend this. I know it's kind of an expensive product, but it really works. I haven't had chap lips all winter because of this lip balm. So that is it. I'm sorry this video is so long. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what your favorites were as far as eyes and lips. And I will see you Thursday with like random skincare, hair care, and makeup tools. So I'll see you then. Bye.